Greetings everyone to Samtest's first ever collaboration. In this corner we've got the amazing topic. What's your favorite game, music, item, and character in video games? And in this corner we've got the amazing man that's going for 150 pounds, Pixel Grub. Let's get ready to rumble! Sonic 2 has always been my favorite game. It's a classic from my childhood, an absolute gem. I've been playing this game since I was a toddler. Hell, that's not far from the truth, considering it came out the same year I was born. It just makes that even more special to me. It's just overall a really fun game. The levels are fun to blast through, the music's bloody amazing, the bosses are simple but still fun, except for that final boss. <laughs> and yes, I know, Sonic 3 is technically better in every single way, but you. Then I don't care what you all say, I'm picking Sonic 2 because the nostalgia demon in my brain won't leave me alone until I do- PLEASE MAKE IT STOP! At least it's better than Sonic 1. I remember when I first got that game as a teenager, I was so excited. I was thinking, oh, this is great, I finally got my hands on another Sonic game, I get to see its origins, and then I realized it was absolute GARBAGE! The level design was atrocious, filled to the brim with bottomless pits, and there was no spin dash! I didn't even know that was a new feature in Sonic 2. Oh, and don't even get me started on Scrap Brain Zone. Fuck. Oh, by the way, here's a fun bit of trivia. Did you know? You can get all seven Chaos Emeralds within the first zone of the game, just because of how many goalposts there are. It was always a dream of mine to do that and then beat the first boss of Super Sonic, and not too long ago, I was finally able to accomplish that. Uh, a humble brag, I'm quite chuffed about that. It's just put that on a frame. Just a picture of me holding my, my grotty copy of Sonic 2 and just pulling the middle finger at all of you losers. All you losers that'll never be on my level. <laughs> Get wrecked, scrubs. I love video game music. Especially good boss battle songs. Nothing beats them. Those tracks from Sonic Frontiers. Mwah! Oh, chef's kiss. But for this category, I wanted to choose something a bit different. This is a track from Risk of Rain 2 titled The Rain Formerly Known as Purple. Yes, that's the actual name. And is used in the second last stage, Sky Meadow. And performed by the brilliant Chris Christophe de la... De la Chris... Crystal Chris Christodolu. Yeah, let's just call him Chris Chris for short. Every now and then, a messiah of music appears within the video game space. People like Brian Schmidt, Stuart Copeland, Grant Coco, all brilliant musicians with their own unique styles of music. And I like to think Chris Christodolu is one of them. Oh, yeah, I said it right. Chris does a brilliant job of making these nice atmospheric tracks that fit in brilliantly with the levels and the game's pace. Always starting off slow as you spawn in and picking up the pace as the enemy starts spewing in to break your bones. And this track just happens to be my favorite. Honestly, I really struggled to think of something for this category. Nothing really came to mind when I thought about a favorite item. But then I heard it. A glorious sound. Just like how Abraham heard God talk into his head telling him to kill his only child. And so I rose from my chair and got... 3D Dot Game Heroes. For those of you not familiar with the game, there's a bunch of different swords that you can get that can be powered up for a unique upgrade system. On top of the usual stat increases and special effects you can add to the blades, you can also increase their width and length, making them ridiculously massive. But screw those weapons, because there's one in particular that has a special place in my heart, and it ain't even a sword. Presenting the Home Run Bat and its glorious... <laughs> Nothing, I repeat, nothing beats that sound. Orgasmic. Now if you know anything about me, you'll know that my pick for favorite character is gonna have to go to- ah!
Yeah, Waluigi. I don't know what it is about this lanky freak, but he speaks to me. I've always loved this guy. The fact he thinks everyone besides him is cheating is just adorable. But I think it's the fact that he's the outcast trying to prove himself to everyone that I like the most about him. I think that just makes for a fun character. He's the unwanted child desperately trying to prove his worth to Papa Miyamoto. Please, Papa, notice me. Acknowledge me. <laughs> But alas, this child will always be denied the teat of Nintendo. Well, at least the fans treat him well. I haven't played Psycho Waluigi yet, but damn, that looks amazing! Whoa! Totally radical! Well done, Pixel Grub. That was an amazing performance. Awesome choices. Next up, we got Pika. He is a big, buff Pikachu man. Hey, peeps. Name's Pika. My favorite game has to go to Sign Ranger. It was my first ever Steam game I bought and I played it since its early access. I watched the game grow ever since and now we have its sequel, but I'm mainly going to talk about the first one. As the name suggests, Slime Ranger is a farming sim, but not in the usual sense. It's in first person. You're in an alien planet 100 light years from Earth equipped with a backpack and that is your only tool. It gives you a good tutorial on how the game works, you suck up slimes and items and you have to farm their I mean plots to sell. That's it. You suck up various slimes to shoot into pens and fire food into their faces. Scoop up their plots and sell them to Earth to get cash needed to get more pens or upgrades like health, energy or storage. Two of my favourite slimes have to be the Tabby and Hunter, the two smaller cats. There's even a tune where you have to let a Tabby head, Tabby butt, headbutt you. Even my OC's cats are stylizing them too. I highly recommend Slime Ratio to play and if you can, get the VR expansion too. Amazing. Next up, we've got Mecha Taku Gamer. Hey guys, I'm Mecha Taku Gamer here, and I'm so happy to be in this video. And thank you, Sam Chat, for inviting me. <clears throat> now, when I was asked to be in this video, I was told to choose a favorite game and talk about what I like about it. And I immediately was a little bit confused on what exactly what type of game I want to play. I normally play RPGs, but I immediately thought of one of my favorite childhood platformers on the PS1, and that is none other than Apescape, a game that just, every time I think about it or see it, it just brings a wave of nostalgia on me, and I can't wait to talk more about some of the other games that I grew up playing on in my childhood on my channel, but here I'm just going to briefly talk about what I really like about Apescape, and starting off is the fact that it is one of the very first 3D platformers I ever played as a kid, and I absolutely love and adore the entire series, but the first game is one of my absolute favorites. It's one of the most unique and most like replayable PS1 platformers, in my personal opinion. And what makes it really unique is that it is one of the very first games that required the analog DualShock controller. So you use the left thumbstick to like move your character around, and then you have all these different gadgets that you use to capture all these crazy monkeys that have been set loose throughout history. And you have different gadgets ranging from a stun club to a monkey net. You have a propeller called the uh, Sky Flyer. You have a hula hoop that will let you dash. A radar that will let you seek out all the crazy monkeys. You also have a sling bat shooter, aka a slingshot, and you also have like an RC car and so many other different gadgets. And there's all sorts of different levels ranging from the dinosaur era all the way up to the medieval era and beyond. And this game is just absolutely fantastic. I still feel like it holds up to this day. I've played this game so many times. I want to say at least around 50 times or more. One time I even played it all the way from the beginning to the end on one without saving whatsoever because I did not have a memory card at the time and I just had an absolute blast playing it. And it's the, what besides its unique like gameplay mechanics, the main one thing I really love about this game that makes me keep going back to it is the level designs. The level, a lot of the levels are short and a lot of them are huge. There's so many different monkeys 
monkeys to capture like the, your main goal throughout each level is to capture a certain amount of monkeys and also you can go back after beating the final boss and go through the entire game again capturing all the other monkeys just to unlock the true final boss so this is one game that really encourages you to 100% it in order to get the true ending of the game and I just I love playing this game so much and thank you again Sam Chaff for having me on check out some of the videos on my channel Mecha Otaku Gamer and I will see you guys in the next video peace so retro i've never seen apex escape or even play this because i'm more of a nintendo nerd but that looks groovy right last but not least is upper numbers Hey guys, Up and Nimbus here. So thank you to Six Samchat Nine for inviting me to his collaboration. Now there's four things on this list, and I'm going to begin with my favorite game of all time, The Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask. I remember the very first time when I got this game. I was just a little kid. I was a little boy, and we had actually traded our family copy of Perfect Dark for Majora's Mask. And at a very young age, somehow I was able to slightly understand the deep dark psychological themes going on in Majora's Mask. Now, not everything, not everything completely, but I definitely understood some of that stuff on the surface. And it really awakened within me that emotional understanding within video games as an art form and a medium. And that story for a Zelda game was just so heart shattering and just so philosophical the deep you looked into it. And that's why Majora's Mask is my favorite game of all time. And continuing with the Zelda theming, my favorite item within a video game is the hook shot slash claw shot. I always found it to be that one key item that was able to get you from point A to point Z. So it's basically just a spring loaded chain inside a contraption and when you lock and load and fire it, it launches a very sturdy straight chain. And once it latches onto the other side, it drags you with it all the way over to where you want to go. The hook shot is just such a cool item. I love it so much. It's a Zelda staple in my eyes. And and I always just love that feeling of getting it because you're like, oh my god, yes. This is that one item I needed to be able to cross that map and go to a new region and explore it. And that's why I love the hookshot so much. Well, another one of my favorite franchises of all time is the Xenoblade Chronicles series. So in regards to my favorite song, or at least one of my top favorite songs from the Xenoblade franchise, I would say that Engage the Enemy definitely comes to mind from the original Xenoblade Chronicles. Engage the Enemy always played during very dramatic and theatrical moments within the game. Whenever you heard Engage the Enemy, you knew that something emotional was about to unfold. The song truly represents a turning point in the story that makes you think and feel deeply about the characters involved and the setting and everything that is happening within the story and premise of the game. Engage the Enemy plays a handful of times within the original Xenoblade, but when it does play, you know it's a key moment that is going to stand out and resonate with you for a long time. I will admit that it was a pretty tough decision deciding on Engage the Enemy, but I had to just for the sadness and melancholy alone. Now for the final part of this video, I need to decide on my favorite video game character of all time. I know that this is probably going to come across as super generic and a really obvious choice for a guy who loves Nintendo games, but I'm going to have to just pick Mario, the man himself, from the Super Mario Brother games. I'll tell you what, having him there from the moment I was basically born, coming into this existence with Mario at my fingertips, he is such a diverse and malleable character. Character. He fits into any mold and situation so well. He is that family oriented character that we all fell in love with when we were younger. And especially in the 80s and 90s, Mario was just like the biggest thing. Anytime I see the side of Mario, I just feel so at home and peaceful and just know that everything's going to be all right. Six, Sam Chat Nine, I want to thank you once more for having me on for this little collaboration of yours. So until the next time, everybody, Up in Nimbus is signing off. Ah yes, Majora's Mask. Very emotional. Oh, thank you, Up and Nimbus. 
Okay. Now it's my turn. I want to show you something that's absolutely mind blowing. If you were casually walking down the street and someone rocked up to just say the question, how do you describe Kirby? Well, there are the chances that you would say something like this. If you get the devil and extract all of the pure evil out of him, basically just put that evil aside, you will get Kirby. Because Kirby is the purest of all pure. He is the He is the goodness of all good. You know, he is the it's the yin and yang. He he's the good and something else is the bad. Kirby games is all about pure goodness always versing pure evil. You see, fortunately enough, and unfortunately enough, Kirby seems to have a bad habit of interacting with pure evil creatures that want to do nothing but destroy everything and everything in its path. And Kirby just has to like, you know, toughen up and like, fine, I'll sort this out. You know that your world's in good hands when Kirby's sorting it out. After all, it's his home and universe as well. He is a young Star Warrior, it's his mission. Okay, next up on this list. Oh, one of my favorite games is Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. I did say one. I got plenty other favorite games, but I just want to talk about this one for now. Okay. Not my main game. That's for another video. But yes, the Donkey Kong Country series. I played the first one on the Super Nintendo when I was a wee boy, maybe five years old, when I was living in Caloundra, which is a beachy region. And then I played number two on an emulator at my friend's place called the 4X. Oh, he loves Donkey Kong as well. Well, he used to. He's into music now. I haven't played number three. Well, I haven't finished it. It hasn't really struck up to me to carry on any enthusiastic elements based on it. And number four, bloody Retro Studios made that and they did a great job reviving Donkey Kong Country called DKC Returns. The plot was funny as hell. The whole bloody island got invaded by Tiki's and they just wanted the banana horde to try to keep on reproducing. Uh, <laughs> and so they tried to hypnotize Donkey Kong but it failed miserably. He's either too smart or too stupid. Comedy. And Tropical Freeze is just a typical Viking invasion. <laughs> but the cast members are penguins and polar bears and other cold climate creatures. And um, I, I've forgotten, yeah, they just wanted a new country to be honest. Next up on this list is my favorite in-game item which is the Master Sword. It's been there since the beginning of time and it holds a spirit of a robot. <laughs> kinda. She kinda acts like a spirit. but. Play Skyward Swords to get a proper idea. I don't want to say anything here, but the Master Sword has been there since the beginning of the timeline and as far as I know to the end of the timeline. And at the end of the timeline, it's kind of got a bit more... It's... it's... Well, I have to admit, the Master Sword is aging, it's slightly dying, but it can get revived. Okay, lucky last on this list is the music. My favorite theme will have to be the desert from Mario Luigi Superstar Saga called Teehee Valley. The name is funny on its own, but what is not funny is if bloody Princess Peach goes off the screen, she'll get kidnapped and you have to track her down while listening to this epic song. Check it out. go out and go for a walk, enjoy this beautiful land, eh? Because content creating can be exhausting and it's good to stretch the wings. Holy shit, is that a whore? Now that's it. The end. Everyone's a champion. Everyone's a winner. I need to go see a doctor. Thank you for everyone that joined me for this collaboration. You guys are amazing. And everyone, check out these content creators. They do such superb jobs on their YouTube channel. Now, Hit a like and subscribe and the bell and I gotta get going. Bye!